Welcome to the Mancast. It's good to be. I'm finally here. Finally I'm here. looking at this set every day from my show. I'm like, <laughs> I've got to be on Paul's set at some point soon. So it's wonderful to be here. Thank Welcome. You. You've just gone, hang on, surely. When, when, when <laughs> yeah. can I get some fake yeah, bricks? I'm going to get all this stuff too. It's, just, it's a nice vibe in here, Paul. Anytime, anytime. Now, um, as a bloke who's travelled the world, talked about the world an awful lot. Yeah. What did you learn out of this experience? This is the story of our time. China is the story of our time because it influences so many nations around the world and you talk about that free trade agreement that was signed in 2014 it didn't take long for things to go belly up did it <laughs> we started pushing back and the economic story has been unbelievable from china's point of view you've got the bri it's this huge trade corridor that that that, that, that travels far and wide but then you've got the military expansion on top of the economic expansion as well, and that is something to worry about. They've got more than 2 million ground troops. They've got more warplanes and warships than anybody else. They are regularly flying into Taiwan's airspace. There's the build-up, the militarisation of the South China Sea. All of this stuff we need to be worried about. And when you're talking about if war is going to happen, well... War's kind of already happening when it comes to the grey war. Yeah, sort of is, thing. I don't. I don't think you know. Look, I don't think there's ever a World War Three. Look forward to that to be taken out of context one day. <laughs> but I certainly think that they don't have to fire a shot because they've got they own so much debt mm. and cybercrime is just all day every day. I mean, yeah. remember it was a mystery nation state. Yeah. Uh, that hacked the Australian Parliament, our Parliament. where our MPs couldn't use their emails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is just the start. This is happening all the time. The former ASIO chiefs have said this. It's the threat is real, it's present, it's an ever-present danger. And this is all part of the China story that we were slow to react to. Even the current government admits that. Mm. Uh, the rise of China has, has, has taken us all by surprise. But now we're pushing back. And there's still a lot of unanswered questions too. You've got the port of Dan. What are we going to do with that now? A huge strategic asset. Well, then, you know, I notice, you know, very early, obviously, you've had the joy of seeing it. Amazing bit of telly. You're going to you. love this, seriously, right? Um, this has been one of those ones you don't just watch, but you're going to share with your mates. It's a very good show. Um, is that Bob Carr, right, turns mm. around and says, you know, well, they were always inevitable. There was always going to be massive. They'll always be number one in the world. Oh, well, then, OK. The problem is, is that it isn't a country like anywhere else. Mm. In the United States, as bad as the US may be, for a lot of historic reasons, they don't have a million people... Mm locked up in re-education mm. camps because they don't believe in the right form of God. Mm. They don't have slave labour. Um, they don't deperson people. Mm. They don't simultaneously pretend to be a developing country mm. while having space stations and, yeah. and, and, and hypersonic missiles. This is the conundrum of China that makes it unique. Yeah, and, and, the, and the, the rise is worth celebrating. I mean, dragging 850 million people, give or take, out of poverty into the middle class, that's extraordinary work. And Australia has... a big part to play in that from all the product that they've purchased from us but they can't expect given that expansion it to go unchecked now they, they, they're gonna have to even Xi Jinping would have to appreciate that nations are gonna push back yeah and that's what's happening now but also they've created this scenario though and and again as, as people in the documentary say they're not the first person who invented economic coercion no. right powers have always done it right which is put simply if you're the massive customer you just turn around and say you said what mm. uh, as a punishment here mm. however again part of their immaturity and i think in this is part what what mm. keating was talking about about sort of you know the yeah. naughty teenage phase is that they interpret the slightest level of observation mm. to be full on attack oh well, let's bring in Norway, yeah. right? So it picked a fight with Norway because it didn't like who Norway gave its Nobel Peace Prize to. <laughs> it started a trade war with, with Norway of all places. I mean, that, that goes to show part of its thinking at the moment. You know, it doesn't like being offended on the international stage. And we're just seeing pictures of Mao Zedong on the, on the, on the, on the screen behind you there. Xi Jinping sees himself as Mao 2.0. He wants to fulfil... Mao's plan, mm. which is to make China the number one superpower in the world. That's his goal. Then every now and then we hear that, you know, that this bloke who's president for life has found a new way to make him really president for life. He seems to constantly be yeah. re-fortifying yeah. his power because we keep being told that the internal threats mm. still exist in China. Now, obviously, it's not democracy. Is it parts of the Communist Party that think there's a different way to do it? Mm. If this bloke is so dominant... What did you learn about why he he keeps fortifying himself, sort of welding himself into the well, office? Well, because he sees himself as the man to do it. 
to, to fulfil, as I said, uh, Mao's legacy. And, and, you know, now he's going to be president for life. That, that shouldn't surprise anyone. I mean, the, the, this, this was all set in motion in 2018 when, when they said that you could do more than two-term limits, right? Yeah. And we've seen this movie before. Vladimir Putin did the same thing in the last couple of years too. Michael where, Bloomberg in New York. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, this was all part of his plan. And he's only 68, right? Yeah. Uh, Xi Jinping's only 68. He's going to be around for a while. The problem is, for him, John Howard makes this point in our documentary too, if problems don't come from outside forces, it will come from internal forces being that population, the 850 million people who all of a sudden have a bit more wealth, have a bit more education, and at some point down the track, they're not going to like being told what to do or what to think anymore. Correct. So this is where the problem for Xi is going to come from. About the Australia, I mean, again, great thing about the documentary is that you've got people who have made a lot of money mm. or would like to make some more money out of China, mm. and some of them, including a very legendary uh, wine family, the yeah. Tyrrells family, yeah. have basically said, oh, well, bugger them. You know, if you, yeah. they're done. Here's part of the, the documentary. Uh, this is uh, one of the... the Owners of the Tyrrells family, the wine business been around since the late 1800s. I've said to said to our people, if if you've got the choice of buying something that's not Chinese, then you probably should you should buy it. Because if they're refusing to buy our product, then why should we we should reciprocate? Retribution, but first. Oh, retribution's one way of putting it, yeah, I suppose. We're not given access to that market then we'll withdraw our little bit of access here. It's a bit of old-fashioned tit-for-tat, but someone keep punching the nose every day, you don't give them a free lunch. Firstly, quality sweater. The joy, the, the joy of being a thick bloke versus a fat bloke is you can wear the sweaters. I can't. It looked like a bulletproof vest. Oh, it was done a few months ago, that one, so it was, it was quite cold, Paul. Yeah. Um, but then there are others inside the show that say, no, no, we, we, yeah. we can't play like that. Exactly, and, and it depends what your background is, how big your business is too. We went up to Maury and we spoke to some barley growers, uh, farmers. Uh, we spoke to some cotton growers as well. Uh, and, you know, you get this split once you're outside of the political bubble. When you go out to the bush and you talk to real people and and business owners too, they, they are the ones on the front line feeling the pressure, feeling the squeeze from not being able to sell into China anymore. And it's very much split. Some are saying, well, we've got to get things back on track because our livelihoods, we're getting done over here. Mm. We, need to, we need to make this work. Whereas others, perhaps they've done a little bit better, They've got a little bit more money in the bank. They say, no, stuff them. Yeah. Stuff them. We'll, we'll send our product elsewhere. And for the most part, Paul, that's exactly what's happening. And, and our business owners should be given great credit for doing that. The, the barley in particular, and Dantine's done some great work here um, from a government point of view in, in being able to move barley into places like Mexico for Correct. their beer, right? Correct. So, you know, the Chinese are not going to have our barley for their beer anymore. So that market, that... that that side of the story is quite interesting. Well, also it's that thing where the Quad, which the the you know, PM, of course, it's uh, the United States, India, Japan, Australia. Mm. That's also be the beginnings of let's all start to take up sure. the trade slack yeah. that exists in other areas as well. All right, Tuesday, Wednesday. This is one of those massive stories that. Um, mm. We're having arguments about a third part because it feels like <laughs> you could always wedge There's more so in. There's so much to the story. It's just so complex and, and fascinating. And, and it's, you know, our story with China has, you know, lasted more than 50 years now since Gough Whitlam started things, you know. Right. So we, we delve into that. It's, it's, a, it's a, a complete story of, of where China has come from, where it is now, where it's going. And a lot of people probably won't like the answer to that.